Wilder nodded at two of his men. Get shovels, he said. It was hot digging the graves. A warm wind came from over the vacant sea and blew the dust into their faces as the captain turned the Bible pages. When the captain closed the book, someone began shoveling slow streams of sand down upon the wrapped figures. They walked back to the rocket, clicked the mechanisms of their rifles, put thick grenade packets on their backs, and checked the free play of pistols in their holsters. They were each assigned a certain part of the hills. The captain directed them without raising his voice or moving his hands where they hung at his sides. Let's go, he said. Spender saw the thin dust rising in several places in the valley, and he knew the pursuit was organized and ready. He put down the thin silver book that he had been reading as he sat easily on a flat boulder. The book's pages were tissue thin, pure silver, hand painted in black and gold. It was a book of philosophy at least 10,000 years old he had found in one of the villas of a Martian valley town. He was reluctant to lay it aside. For a time he had thought, what's the use? I'll sit here reading until they come along and shoot me. The first reaction to his killing, the six men this morning had caused a period of stunned blankness, then sickness, and now a strange peace. But the peace was passing, too, for he saw the dust billowing from the trails of the hunting men, and he experienced the return of resentment. He took a drink of cool water from his hip canteen, then he stood up, stretched, yawned, and listened to the peaceful wonder of the valley around him. How very fine it if he and a few others he knew on earth could be here, live out their lives here without a sound or a worry. He carried the book with him in one hand, the pistol ready in his other. There was a little swift running stream filled with white pebbles and rocks where he undressed and waded in for a brief washing. He took all the time he wanted before dressing and picking up his gun again. The firing began about three in the afternoon. By then, Spender was high in the hills. They followed him through three small Martian hill towns. Above the towns, scattered like pebbles, were single villas where ancient families had found a brook, a green spot, and laid out a little tiled pool, a library, and a court with a pulsing fountain. Spender took half an hour, swimming in one of the pools, which was filled with seasonal rain, waiting for the pursuers to catch up with him. Shots rang out as he was leaving the little villa. Tile chipped up some 20 feet behind him, exploded. He broke into a trot, moved behind a series of small bluffs, turned, and with his first shot, dropped one of the men dead in his tracks. They would form a, a net, a circle, Spender knew that. They would go around and close in, and they would get him. It was a strange thing that the grenades were not used. Captain Wilder could easily order the grenades tossed. But I'm too much night. I'm too much too nice to be blown to bits," thought Spender. "That's what the captain thinks. He wants me with only one hole in me. Isn't that odd? He wants my death to be clean, nothing messy. Why? Because he understands me, and because he understands, he's willing to risk good men to give me a clean shot in the head. Isn't that it? Nine, ten shots broke out in a rattle. Rocks around him jumped up. Spender fired steadily, sometimes while glancing at the silver book he carried in his hand. The captain ran in the hot sunlight with a rifle in his hands. Spender followed him in his pistol sights, but did not fire. Instead, he shifted and blew the top of, off a rock when Whitey lay, where Whitey lay and heard an angry shout. Suddenly, the captain stood up. He had a white handkerchief in his hands. He said something to his men and came walking up the mountain after putting aside his rifle. Spender lay there, then got to his feet, his pistol ready. The captain came up and sat down on a warm boulder, not looking at Spender for a moment. The captain reached into his blouse pocket. Spender's fingers tightened on the pistol. The captain said, cigarette? Thanks, Spender, took one. Light? Got my own. They took one or two puffs in silence, Warm, said the captain. It is. You comfortable up here? Quite. How long do you think you can hold out? About 12 men's worth. 
Why didn't you kill us all this morning when you had the chance? You could have, you know. I know. I got sick. When you want to do something badly enough, you lie to yourself. You say the other people are all wrong. Well, soon after I started killing people, I realized they were just fools and I shouldn't be killing them. But it was too late. I couldn't go on with it then, so I came up here where I could lie to myself some more and get angry to build it up to build it all up again. Is it built up? Not very high. Enough. The captain considered his cigarette. Why did you do it? Spencer quietly laid his pistol at his feet. Because I've seen that what these Martians had was just as good as, as anything we've ever hoped to have. They stopped where we should have stopped a hundred years ago. I've walked in their cities and I know these people and I'd be glad to call them my ancestors. They have a beautiful city there, the captain nodded at one of the several places. It's not that alone. Yes, their cities are good. They knew how to, to blend art into their living. It's always been a thing apart for Americans. Art was something you kept in the crazy son's room upstairs. Art was something you took in Sunday does, doses, mixed with religion, perhaps. Well, these Martians have art and religion and everything. You think they knew what it was all about to do, you do? For my money. And for that reason, you, start sh you, you started shooting people. When I was a kid, my, folk, my fox took me to visit Mexico City. I'll always remember the way my father acted, loud and big. And my mother didn't like the people because they were dark and didn't, and didn't wash enough. And my sister wouldn't talk to most of them. I was the only one really who liked it. And I can see my mother and father coming to Mars and acting the same way here. Anything that's strange is not good to the average American. If it doesn't have Chicago uh, plumbing, it's nonsense. The thought of that, oh God, the thought of that, and then the war. You heard the congressional speeches before we left. If things work out, the, uh, they hope to establish three atomic research and atom bomb depots on Mars. That means Mars is finished. All this wonderful stuff gone. How would you feel if a Martian vomited stale liquor on the White House floor? The captain said nothing but listen. Splendor continued. And then the other power, power interest coming up, the mineral man and the travel man. Do you remember what happened to Mexico when Cortez and his very fine good friends arrived from Spain? A whole civilization destroyed by greedy, righteous bigots. History will never forgive Cortez. You haven't acted ethically yourself today, observed the captain. What could, what could I do? Argue with you. Argue with you. It's simply me against the, the whole crooked, uh, greedy setup of Earth. They'll be uh, flopping their filthy atom bombs up here, fighting for bases to have war. Isn't it enough they've ruined one planet without ruining another? Do they have to fold someone else? The uh, simple-minded uh, wingback. When I got up here, I felt I was not the only uh, was not only free uh, of their so-called culture. I felt I was free of their ethics and their customs. I'm out of their frame of reference. I thought all I have to do is kill you, you all off, and live my own life. But it did work out," said the captain. "No, after the fifth killing. Uh, uh, at breakfast, I discovered I wasn't all new. All Martian, after all. I couldn't throw away everything I had learned on Earth so easily. But now, I'm feeling steady again. I'll kill you all off. That's, that's delayed the next trip uh, in a rocket uh, for a good five years. There is no other rocket in existence today, save this one. The people of Earth will wait a year, two years, and then when they hear nothing from us, uh, they'll be very afraid to build a new rocket. 
They'll, they'll take twice as long and, and make a hundred extra experimental models to ensure themselves against another failure. You're correct. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, the Bayesian model is uh, 